I am the people's champ, Johnny Detroit. With me is Uncle Dave Essler. Are you, are you hearing an echo, Dave, or is that just me hearing that? Um, no, it sounds pretty good to me. Okay. If you have a question for Dave, all you got to do is in that pop-up module is go in there, ask your question. It'll go right on the screen. Um, we have a bunch of questions. Dave has a lot of stuff to go over. So if you do have a question, make sure you get in as soon as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is Dave Essler. I, I, I know I get some of the old school guys like Scotty Dog will bitch and say, why do you always do the thing in the beginning where you go over the guy? You know, we know that. Just take some time. Well, everyone's not an old schooler like you, Mr. Dog. And... It's important for the newbies that they know who we're talking with. We're talking to Uncle Dave. He's had four straight winning Major League Baseball seasons at pregame documented. Uh, 75 and 46 across all sports run. And for you short-termers, 62% total run and 18 and 5 run on his game of the week. So beating baseball to me is something I've always been a fan of because I just think that there's so many different aspects. You got your sabermetrics guys like Gil, you got your pure handicappers that know everything about the players and not saying you don't use sabermetrics like you, Dave. Um, you got guys that you know are, are using, say, weather. There's so many different ways to handicap and you know, to me, baseball is the most interesting of any sport to beat. So what I want to do so we can get to some of the questions is I don't know if you're just calling in or if you have the screen up and you can physically see what's in front of me, is you gave me a bunch of things you want to kind of go over. So what I'm going to do is well, I'm going to... I threw some thoughts out there, and, and for the record, I'm not a sabermetrics guy. Well, um, so that means Goodfellas not either, right? Wait, is this Dave or Goodfellas on the phone? No, no I just we were just emailing back about tonight's game. <laughs> I, I had a... I told him I had a cut his short, but it's only 3 o'clock in Oregon. So oh, no. That means no plays. Uh, Someone would jump on the floor. It's like, Johnny from pregame admitted that they talk and share plays. Yeah, I did. So go ahead. Go on your forum with other people. To VR and Mark. I've actually talked to VR and Marco before, too. Uh-oh. Now it's, now it's truly a conspiracy. My bus is for racketeering. It is. It is. It is. So, so, I'm, sorry. I, I'm sorry I share my information and ask for help. <laughs> What I want to do, Uncle Dave, is I'm going to go line by line. Uh, since we only have 30 minutes, just give a couple high-level things. Then we'll move on to the next one. If anybody has questions, make sure you use that pop-up module to ask, and we could double back um, for any specific questions. And I'm going to sit back, ask the question, and listen. First one, Dave, you sent me was, like college basketball evolve, the teams do. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's like college basketball, you know, UConn just won to win the national championship. Are they the same team that they were in November? Of course not. Um, baseball teams are evolving constantly. And, you know, it's like you said that there's so many different things to look at in baseball. And, and, and one of the things I put a fair bit of emphasis on is the human element because we can look at stats forever, and, and they're really important, but they don't tell everything. And baseball teams, because they play – so many games so quickly change a lot faster. And, and I'll give you my this year's classic example is the Washington Nationals. Um, not a lot of attention was paid to it. I guess it was nationally early on when um, Zimmerman made an error at third base when Strasburg was pitching. And, and it was a pretty bad error, don't get me wrong. But Strasburg gave him one of these looks like, what the hell? You know, and then who is Strasburg to be doing that to Zimmerman? And it was a huge deal. And I don't know what the, the Nationals' record is since then, but I know it's not good. And I know I lost to the fish pretty badly. And, 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 and that, like their, their clubhouse karma just is not very good. So when I say evolve, I mean, I, I think you can, you can put all these numbers in you want, but if, if they're not cohesive and they're not playing as a team and they're not together, they're probably not going to win on sheer talent alone more often than not. And and that's one of the things with baseball is I agree with you is you, you've seen a lot of that, you know, in the Yankees bull you know, not bullpen but in the clubhouse, you know, with a lot of egos and, you know, when they're just buying the players. And, you know, not saying we're not spending some serious money lately in Detroit, you know, picking up you know, Cecil Cecil Field <laughs> picking up that showing your age, picking up Prince Field there, you know, paying what we did at Cabrera. But, you know, being a Tigers fan and, you know, having a third of the season is you do see that a lot, is you'll see them high five and cracking jokes in the bullpen. And to me in baseball, especially when you're playing that many games, that is very key. So that's a great point. 
Um, next one, line moves. What do they mean, sides and totals? Um, what do they mean? You know, I probably get shot by the by the by the by the pure betters. <laughs> I, I can hear some people in Vegas now. I got your back, Dave. I got a CCW. Okay, fair enough. Um, line moves, sides anyway, in baseball mean very little or next to nothing to me. Um, because almost all the big dogs are scalped immediately after the line comes out. And it's just going to happen. And what you got to look at is, you know, break it down into simple terms. You know, if you look on Sportsbook Spy now, you'll see 6,000 bets at the most on a baseball game. And if you're looking at, you know, football, basketball, whatever, a, a sport that more people are familiar with betting, you'll see 60,000. So that's two things. Um, you know, A, you, you're not seeing like setup moves, like people aren't moving that number to buy it back later, like they might in football. Um, and because there's only 10% of the bets, there's probably only 10% of the money, meaning it's going to take a whole lot less money to move that number. So I personally don't put a ton of stock into line moves, especially on sides, if you do the work. I mean, you can look at, you know, day after day after day of examples of what would, would be the quote-unquote sharp side. I mean, this afternoon was a, a, an example. You know, the sharp side was was St. Louis. They, they ended up going off as a listed favorite, and then they didn't win. It is, you can get so caught up in those, and it really at some point just becomes noise. Total different story, um, probably a whole other subject. Um, but what I like to do is kind of correlate those totals with the side. And if you go into, you know, pitchers' parks or hitters' parks or what have you, but a lot of times that correlation between the side and the total is pretty key. Um, and it was for me last night, and it is again tonight. And, you know, to use a, a, a classic example, um, last night. And the Red Sox are pretty heavily favored over the White Sox, and the total kept plummeting down, but the side didn't. I mean, that meant it was going to be a low-scoring game, so there was huge value to the White Sox run line to me. Um, today, same example, same two teams. You know, that, that, that total opened at 8.5, and, and, and in some places I would bet that's going to close at 7.5, and, and you have a lot of money on the White White Sox run line. So what they mean to me is more of a correlation between the two. And sometimes it's not what does happen, it's what does not happen. Um, case in point, last night when uh, Strasburg was playing the fish, and I believe Strasburg opened minus 170-ish, and I kind of blew that game off because I won't lay 170. But when I looked right before the game started, he was still 170. And I didn't even have to look at the bet percentage to know everybody and his brother was probably on Strasburg, or at least Joe that bets at the end of the bar. So that was, to me, an automatic to go back and play the fish run line. And look what happened. The fish went out and had like nine to nothing at one point. So to me, it's not, to me, they're, they're, the, the, the total and the side are, are far more intertwined than they are in, in basketball or football. And that's a great point. Um, next one, starting pitching, average 5.98 innings, two to three from the bullpen. And, and real quick, and I, I'm going to ask a tier two question, Dave, because I want to get your thoughts, because I've heard this from a lot of other people. As they've said, you know, we'll use my Tigers in past years, for example. So, you know, Verlander or, or, or Mad Max or whatever it was is, you know, when the big potato turned into the big douchebag and our bullpen was garbage, I would have a lot of people tell me, you know, you could still bet your Verlanders, your Mad Max, but you take them five innings because you can't trust the bullpen. And, you know, there are certain pitchers that, you know, with the bullpen, you could factor in that in. And then for guys like the Tigers, do you really, when you're betting Verlander, you know you're also betting Valverde and you really want to do that. So, Go ahead with the starting pitching in the bullpen. No, I think that ties I, I in. Totally, I totally agree with that, and I haven't put out too many, you know, premium plays on first buys. So I'll kind of throw them into my write-ups, like, you know, if you guys want more risk, I, I would do this. And, um, but yeah, absolutely. And team totals, and there's just so many other, like you said, more ways to, to bet in the baseball. But 
Um, if you just if you just took an actual average, you're going to get two to three innings from your bullpen, which is you know 22 to 33 percent of the game. And people pay attention to the bullpen, but I don't think that they pay enough attention to the bullpen because you know take your take your boy Verlander there. You know what he's going to do more often than not. Um, so whenever you're betting on the Tigers, you're going to look at their bullpen. And to me, that involves two things. Um, a, bullpen usage, um, and, and B, what they're doing now, which kind of gets into my next thing, is what's happening right now. And I, I use some sites that give you the last seven days of a team's splits. And to me, that's important because you know, you might have a team that has a typically crappy bullpen that, you know, they're they're not overworked and they, and they got decent numbers and, and they're playable whereas otherwise they might not be. In other words, the that gets back to the teams evolving so quickly that that they can they can go from really bad to really good and vice versa really quickly. And if you're paying attention to it, you can you can see it coming a little more often than not. Um, I use a lot of the sites that give the bullpen usage which you, it becomes almost predictable after a while. If a guy's pitched two nights in a row, um, like for example, last night I loved the Phillies to come back with Lee, but the game got rained out. If for no other reason, the Braves bullpen had been horrible, and Kimberl had been used two days in a row. So it was, you know, it wasn't a first five bet there. That was a basically a play it would have been against the Braves bullpen. And with that in mind. I bet on the Phillies tonight because I started to think, well, if I liked Cliff Lee last night over David Hale, and I don't know what I'm going to get with Hale, why wouldn't I like Cliff Lee over Julio Turan tonight at a better price because I know what I'm getting with Turan, which is a fly ball pitcher in a hitter's ballpark with a run ball. So, you know, I, I, I really think that you know people should spend half their time on the bullpens. Even even today, you know, you the Cardinals and the Brewers played, and you would think, well, it's, it's Joe Kelly, and I don't need to worry about the bullpen too much. Well, what he goes out after four innings, trying to run out a bunt, and he's done. So now you got five innings of the Cardinals bullpen when you might have kind of figured, well, he's going to give you a quality start, seven innings, and you know, well, they didn't use their closer yesterday, so we're good, and, and bingo. So I mean, you got to know those things. I mean, it's like any other sport, you. The more you know, the better off you are and the better position you can put yourself in to win. Splits. Break them down. Break them down. Splits. Home, home and a road. Um, right, left, I'm far more into, but home and a road. I mean, I just, I go, I use ESPN.com. And, you know, there's no magic formula to it. But if you just sit there and break down what a team's doing at home and what they're doing on the road, I mean, there's some absolutely dramatic differences, especially in pitching staffs. Um, example, not a great one, but it will be before the year's done, the Oakland A's. They're going to have these aggregate pitching numbers that are absolutely phenomenal. But they're going to be more phenomenal at home because they play in a massive ballpark with a huge amount of foul territory. So I would be willing to bet you by the end of the year that their whip and their ERA home road is, is dramatically different. Um, and conversely, you'll get pitchers that pitch in Colorado that you wouldn't touch in Colorado, but you might in Miami, which is a fairly big park. So I think I think you really got to know that. There's, there's a lot of teams that are just terrible against left-handed pitching. Not so terrible against right-handed pitching, so I put a fair bit of I put a fair bit of stock into that. Um, not as much now as I will going forward, but that gets back to evolving. I kind of always figured if I could get out of April with 100 percent of my bankroll intact and have all this information, <laughs> that we're, we'll probably be good for the rest of the year. And you've done so four straight winning years coming into this year. All right, let's talk travel yeah, spots. I, I, I'm not going to lie; I actually lost in the postseason last year. Bad Dave. You still won like what? 20, 30 units last year? Did I lose you, Dave?
Dave, Uncle Dave. Uh, hopefully, we don't have technical difficulties. Dave, you there? Yeah, did I lose you? What happened? I don't know. It was a, a technical glitch. Let's talk. Uh, hold on. Give me, give me, give me one second here. Hold on. Uh, Dodgers. Pugh is. Felton's out. Chandler's out. Felton Chandler. Okay, that's all I needed to see. All right. Um, travel spots. Travel spots. Um, you know, these guys are human. And when they've been on the road for 10 or 12 days and they're coming home and people would be inclined to say, well, the Red Sox are home now and they're playing the Astros, so we're going to bet on the Red Sox. But, you know, let's look at the fact that the Red Sox played in Texas last night. They played extra inning games. They got home at 3 o'clock in the morning. And the wife and kids are kind of yelling at them and bitching at them and screaming at them until they go to the park the next afternoon. So one of the things I really try to avoid is uh, betting on teams in their first game home um, or teams ending a long road trip because their bags are already packed and they're looking forward to going home. Um, I had a I had a game last year. I had um, I follow everybody on Twitter. I was following some of the Miami Marlins, and they were playing a game in New York, and they were stuck on a bus, and they were really pissed about being in New York, really pissed that it was still cold, it was April, and really pissed that it was traffic and smog, and all they wanted to do was get back to Miami, and they were all tweeting this out, so you could absolutely tell they just did not want to play the game. They went out and lost like 9-1. to one. So, you know, travel spots matter, and that would have mattered to me anyway, but here you have the players telling you on Twitter that they really can't wait to get back to LaGuardia. They don't even want to go to City Field. So I think you gotta you, you gotta you gotta factor those in there somewhere too. Familiarity with opponent. Recent rematches. Um, yeah, recent rematches. Um, a lot of these teams, and especially I've noticed this year, are, are playing each other for the for the second time already quite a bit, and. What almost inevitably happens is if the pitcher does well against the team the first time, he's probably going to get hit the second time because the pitchers and the hitters are going to make the adjustments and vice versa. There was a classic case not long ago, go back to the Nationals and uh, Jordan Zimmerman um, at home against the Fish, he didn't make it out of the second inning and gave up seven hits. And Five days later, they played in Miami, and of course, the instinctive reaction would be, well, the fish are going to kill them. And then you know, they already beat the crap out of them. Well, they threw seven innings, gave up two runs, and Miami won, uh, Washington won the game nine to two. So it's almost instinctively to go the other I can't tell you 99 times out of 100, when a pitcher does well, one outing, and if they take play within a few weeks, he's going to do poorly the next outing. This is this is so much sophistication that they make the adjustments time and time and time again. And, and as much as sometimes I have a hard time pulling the trigger on those bets, they're usually right. Watch games or check box score from previous night. And, and, and to me, that watch games is something that I think is one of the most underestimated things. With today's modern technology, we're on your TV. You could watch almost any sport from around the world. You could watch stuff. You could DVR it. If you want to take your betting seriously, especially if you're going to be conference specific or you know, focus on the, on the smaller conferences or the, or the less popular teams, you know, you're going to focus on the Pirates over the Yankees, it, is watching those games and see what goes into that box score. Um, you know, was it just you know, the team was unmotivated. Was it just, you know, a guy slipped, you know, same thing in football. I think watching the games is something in today's modern era with how everything is so stat based and all the data that's online. People don't watch enough games like they should and put that into their arsenal. Well, I'll, I'll let you uh, talk further on that, Dave. Well, no, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, on any given night, I've got two TVs and, and two of my laptops going, watching at least parts of different games because, you know, I guess I'm a sick bastard, but if I'm going to bet a couple thousand dollars, I want to know what I'm betting on. Right. And 
you know, it's, 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 you know, I know baseball can be boring. It's a seven-month season, but if you're going to do it to make a living, you've got to put the work in. Um, you know, there's there's things that happen in a baseball game um, that, um, I, I guess, a good example of that would be the other night when. Um, Murphy and David Wright got thrown out against the Cardinals, or maybe it was against the Giants before they went to play the Cardinals. And it almost looked like they did it intentionally to fire up their team, to piss off their team, you know, whatever, to get some motivation going. And that, to me, almost said, well, we got to take the Mets. And sure enough, the Mets went ahead and won, I think, the next two, maybe three games against the Cardinals. They were winning this afternoon last time I checked. But if you don't watch the games, in other words, if you just see the box score, you might see two errors. And, and errors tend to be one of those things that also goes sort of in streaks. When a team starts to play poorly in the field, they typically continue to play poorly in the field. And if you're just seeing a team made a couple errors, well, yeah, it might have been a throwing error to take a guy off a of first base by the catcher, which is kind of excusable, for lack of a better word. But if you're watching the game and you're seeing you know, bobbled routine double play balls or or stuff that doesn't even show up, like cutoff men being just totally ignored, you know, that that's a team playing poorly that you probably don't want to bet on. Um, you know, case in point today, um, the Brewers had four unearned runs on two errors by the Cardinals. But people are going to see, well, Brewers scored five runs, beat the Cardinals, they're back on top. Well, I don't think so. The Cardinals kind of handed them that game. And unless you're watching part of the game, I think it's really hard to pick that up. Errors and under and runs. Give me one line on that. We'll jump right to weather from there, and then we'll get to the questions as we close things out. And don't forget, everyone who's listening now, and I'm going to put this video up right away on the websites. For those who will be watching this after the fact, um, there will be a coupon that you could use to get 50% off days package for Thursday. So give me a quick one liner on errors and under runs. Uh, what your best tip is there, Dave? Um, a lot of those I use for totals, Johnny. Um, it's um, teams teams that uh, might have a reasonable ERA, uh, but don't tend but do tend to give up a lot of unearned runs. I mean, I I, I will I will go to um, let me see if I can find it where I have it. You know, I, Team like team like Baltimore, and people don't give them a lot of credit, but they've only made three errors this year, and I think have given up three, maybe four unearned runs. And and to me, if I'm betting on a team, I don't want to be giving up unearned runs. Um, teams like Washington that have committed a buttload of errors. I keep using them. I guess I should just fade them every game this year. Um, you know, their their fielding percentage is. is like worst in the league, and they've given up the most honor and runs. So, you know, I, I would tend to want to fade them and perhaps look at some of their over, uh, because um, that's where you know a lot of those games that go over the total typically do so on unearned runs or walks, which is you know whip. We didn't even talk about that. Is also pretty important to me. Well, walks and hits per inch pitched. Um, those, those will put you. In, in other words. It, it, again, it gets right back to basketball. You know, you just want teams that are going to put themselves in the best position to win and not beat themselves more often than not. Speaking of, of fading, here's a great stat for everybody. You'd actually have to go back to the 2008 Major League Baseball season to not have made money just betting against the Chicago Cubs every game. So the 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, and so far in 2014, the Cubs betting against them would have had you in the plus if you just bet against them every game, which I'm not telling everyone to do, but when you have a team for that many years at the end of the year is just blanket betting against them as you plus, that's a team you maybe want to find certain situations where, you know, if there is an instance that you have to take a favorite or whatnot, if they're playing the Cubs, that might be one of the check marks on the positive side. We're going to go to weather sites and weather parks. And before we. Yeah, one, thing, to... one thing I did want to mention, mm -hmm. um, speaking, of, speaking of teams and season-long bets, if 
you know, I guess each team's probably played about 14 or 15 games this year, and, and you would think there would be some fairly wild vacillations in pluses and minuses in teams. But if you throw out a team like Arizona, who's, you, you'd be down about 10 units betting on them every game this year. If you throw out sort of the high and the low, Arizona being the, being the low and, and, and the Brewers probably being the high, if you took the other 30 teams, you're within probably four units, plus or minus, either way on every team. And probably half of those teams, you're within a unit. So if you run almost – that goes, that goes to <coughs> say – that goes to – I think it speaks to how – Difficult this really is that time. Oh, for sure. I, I play around with a lot of old data and databases, and you'd be shocked on how many trends or certain situations. If you go back far enough, it ends up where you know you'd, be, you'd lose either way, betting the favorite or the dog. So before you go to the weather, well, I want to share a really good stat, and you know I'm a big fan of. And, and Rodney Crow had just asked, "What about betting trends?" And here's one that I think a trend, I guess you could say. Uh, based on the weather, that I wouldn't blanket bet, but I would factor it into your total handicapping. A 400-foot home run goes six feet further for a one-inch reduction in barometer. The same ball hit in 45-degree weather will go 20 feet further in 95-degree weather. Now listen to this. Over the past 2,000 Major League Baseball games that the temperature was 60 degrees Fahrenheit or less, if you bet 500 on the under, you would have won about twenty-seven thousand dollars. If you had a blanket bet five hundred on the over, you would have lost a hundred and forty-two thousand. So it goes back to like I said with the weather, wind blowing in, um, low temperatures, certain things like that. Is don't throw that out the window if you're betting totals. I definitely would take the time to look into that. So Dave, I'm going to let you end with the weather and weather parks. Um, if you could just be real quick, because there's a bunch of questions I need to get to, and then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna end this baby with the coupon. Well, we can go to the questions. I mean, you know, people can look up the weather parks. I mean, and, you know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go right to Sleepy J. Um, one well, of the you know, you know, dome teams. If you know, you got to know if the roof's gonna be open or closed. That I mean, that makes a huge difference. Huge difference. You know, um, you know that's pretty standard stuff, but. You do have to know those parts, and you have to know that those totals are adjusted for those parts. Um, case in point, the Astros tonight, that line opened at 9. It's probably going to go down to 8 because everybody assumes a minute made with the roof open, they're going to score 100 runs. And I tend to think not because both pitchers are ground ball pitchers. So, you know, do the work. Exactly. Do the work. Can't say it better myself. The first question is from Sleepy J. How should we look at first-time pitchers coming up? With no real Major League Baseball stats, how do we approach the handicap? And is there anything that has stuck out in the past, maybe trend-wise? Um, I'll give a one-liner, then I'll hand it over to the expert. My opinion, with so many games going on per day in Major League Baseball, unless you know something specific about this pitcher and you really followed the way they played or what they did in the major, you know, or the minor leagues, I don't really see any reason to force that game if you don't really have data on one of the most important positions, which is the starting pitcher. Dave, your thoughts? Well, I won't force it, but I'll definitely look at it. I mean, you can go on baseballreference.com and pretty quickly get what they've done in, you know, double A AA and triple A. And, you know, if, they, if they've done respectable, sometimes you can get a good price on it because they think, you know, who is this Johnny Detroit guy from Tigers that was pitching to Albuquerque? <laughs> and, then, you know, and then you look and you say, well, shit, he had a whip of like point eight, and struck out, you know, 14 for nine innings. But I think the most important thing there is there's no book on him for the other team either. So typically that would be advantage starting pitcher, but that would also be one where the kid would probably be on a pitch count and I would either be a first five or I would even want to know about the bullpen. That's a great point. That goes into the whole thing, like you mentioned earlier, about being able to handicap the bullpen. Is you know even if you have Stone Cold nuts down, that pitcher coming up, if like you said his pitch count, they're not going to let him put pitch 100, you know 120 pitches or whatever. That they're going to go to that middle reliever a little sooner than normal. If they got you know Phil Coke <laughs> as a guy coming in, you might want you might want to pass on, on, on who that's going to be. I just want to get the coupon up here because we're down the stretch. Um, next one, big favorites. I see all the time. I see all the time where I see people say the pitcher is not worth being a $2 favorite, but put same pitcher in same situation with same lineups for the same team, but as a minus 140 favorite, 
and they are the better play at that price. If you think the win is a minus 140 favorite, they should have a better chance as a minus 180 or more favorite, correct? Correct. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, as a matter of fact, that's a whole other 30-minute conversation in my book. Um, I totally agree with that. Um, and because we do what we do, I won't put out premium plays for people at those kind of numbers. But I like that on him personally more often than not. Um, you know, yeah, I, I can't argue that at all, and I won't argue that because he's absolutely right. Um, you know, people people will see that well, he's only 145; it should be more, and they get scared off of it. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a whole. I, I totally agree with that, and and I personally don't have any problem laying those big numbers. Obviously, not for lots of dollars, but. And, and, and to be honest, for me at least, is, you know, for Tigers on opening day is, you know, I had a lot of friends. They're like, yeah, I'm going to take the Tigers on the run line. It's like I would I would rather lay the layer. The, on the road, maybe, I you know, I'm, I'm more likely to, I'm gonna, obviously going to take the run line because that extra at bat. But I, I would stay away from that trying to take that big money pitcher to get it down and taking a minus one and a half when they're playing at home. Because you know what's well, going to happen. Is, you know, there again, you got you got games like that all the time. They're going to win three <laughs> two. Well, yeah, you got Darvish, Darvish, and, and and Felix tonight. I mean, what, you know, what's that going to be? I mean, obviously that's not a high money line, but you know, the Yankees and uh, and the Cubs tonight, even with Pineda pitching, opened at one seventy, and I think the Yankees are like one forty. And you know that's got three two or two one and one nothing written all over because it's thirty degrees. So you know. That's where you want to take the run and be assured the ninth at bat. I, I've you know, seen that's, some that's, data that's sometimes. 11, that's eleven percent of your game that you're giving away if you're taking the home team on your run run. There, there was a point this year that actually ran the data when you know the favorites were on a run, and if you would have bet that money line, you would have been profitable. But if you would have take those same exact teams and took the minus one, you know, one and a half runs, you would have yeah. lost money. So I, especially well, at home, I would. You know, what's going to happen, and don't tell me that you've never done this either, is you take, you know, Verlander on the run line, and it's, you know, it's 7 nothing Tigers in the fifth, and you're ready to cash your ticket. But because Verlander's at 80 pitches, and, you know, they play the White Sox tomorrow, we're going to take him out and throw in, oh, let's just say Phil Coke for a few innings, and the Tigers end up winning 7-6. to six. Yeah, Just like opening day against Kansas City. They uh, won by one run. Last question. Coupons on the screen. Um, in advance, I want to say I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us. Uh, Dave's package is actually for Thursday loaded now. Dave, uh, by what time tomorrow do you think the picks will be loaded? Oh, boy, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Do we wait for lineups or don't we? <laughs> I, want, I want the best chance to win. How about this? It's, it's, it's up there now. Dave will it's update like with us. It's, like it's like the one dollar thing that you make us. We have to have it by one o'clock. You know, people don't grasp that. Um, it, I'm always done by six o'clock, and, and usually earlier. I, whatever. I don't care if it has to be six thirty-two. If that's what wins for you, go ahead. Last question, and then we're gonna end this thing. Is um, how much confidence? goes into picking big dogs for handicapper. I feel like picking big dogs are more like a guessing game. Very little statistical data to back up the play. To me, handicappers are happy hitting 40% of dogs, and I'm not just wired that way. I want to hit high 50% every time, so I play very little dogs. What's your mindset or approach to picking underdogs? Um, it, again, that changes during the season. Um, Early in the season, I would be far more inclined to take underdogs because there's a lot better value because Vegas is just guessing too. Um, but if I play underdogs, and I've, I've kind of already gone through this, and you know, me and Goodfellow will argue this every day, so that could be another thread. Um, you know, road dogs, I'm not a big fan of at all. Um, home, home dogs, I am a big fan of. I mean, you can look at even the crappiest team in baseball typically plays not that much below 500 at home, and you're guaranteed the ninth at bat. Now, what I will do in a lot of those situations, you know, if they're, if they're plus 130 at home and 
the total is eight and I can get the run line at like minus one thirty, I would probably do that rather than trying to be really cool and hit the plus one sixty money line. Because you're right, unless you have a lot of data and a super confidence level, you're probably gonna lose because they're probably one sixty for a reason. Dave Pleasure as always. I know you're a busy family man, busy with all your businesses, busy handicapping, busy brainstorming with a good fella, another jab at the haters. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, for everyone who wants to watch this again, I know Dave, to be honest, I don't think we've had a webinar that somebody went through more data than Dave just did in 30 minutes. So thanks to Dave. Thanks for everyone who attended. Uh, Dave, is there anything you want to say before we close out the video? No, nah, don't you gotta go feed your kids and, and answer all those pregame bitching people comments, don't you? <laughs> hey, that's that's what I do, brother. That's what I do. <laughs> that's what you do, I know. All right, everybody. Thanks for attending. Thanks to Uncle Dave Esler. Don't forget that coupon. As always, if you need anything, you can contact me at johnny at pregame.com. If you need to contact Dave, you go right to his pregame pros page. You can message him there. That's going to do it from me, Dave Esler, pregame.com. As always, from me to you, best of luck.